The most important part of long range shooting can be your ability to dope the wind and determine what the wind is doing, not just where you're standing, but downrange. In this week's shooting tip, we're gonna teach you three techniques that allow you to bracket the wind and bring it into a quantifiable, attainable process that we can systematically go through and achieve. But first, I wanna talk about a very simple, very easy concept that gives us the ability to bracket our wind speed in, in, in attainable values and also execute these long range shots. And all it takes is a little preparation in our cartridge and bullet selection. Uh, let's just do an example and I think that'll illustrate the concept. A lot of people set up to shoot long range and they're, they're not quite sure what cartridge they're gonna pick. Uh, the 308 Winchester has a lot of connotation of being a military tactical long range shooting round. Let's take that cartridge with a 168 grain hollow point boat tail bullet and compare it against a 7 millimeter Remington Magnum with a 168 grain Berger VLD, very high ballistic coefficient. With the 308 at 1,000 yards in a 10 mile an hour wind, we have about nine minutes of angle of wind deflection. Now that's 90 inches. Compare that against the seven millimeter Remington Magnum, that's a 168 grain bullet, just over 3,000 feet per second. We're talking four and a half minutes of angle or 45 inches. That's half the wind deflection. Now think about that for a minute. What that means is if you shoot the 308 Winchester, you have to be twice as good at doping your wind so that you can make that shot, make that compensation, and, and be the long range hero of the day. If you're shooting the seven millimeter Remington Magnum, it allows you a little more margin of error in your ability to dope the wind and consequently your point of impact and your hit probabilities come up. So uh, if recoil's an issue, take that same concept of efficient bullet and adequate velocity and look at like the 65284 with the 140 grain bullet. Again, high ballistic coefficient, adequate velocity, reduced wind deflection. Now what we're gonna take this information and, and spin it and turn it into a technique that allows us to systematically analyze our conditions and dope or determine our wind speed and direction and with that information we can execute a proper ballistic compensation. In a lot of long range shooting situations your success is going to be based solely on your ability to determine your wind speed and direction and make a proper wind compensation. Now we're going to cover three really simple techniques that allow us to uh, apply a bracketing technique of estimating our wind in 0, 5, 10, 15 mile per hour increments. And with the right cartridge combination, this is going to put you on target in the vital zone. Now the first technique is really simple. We've covered this before. It's using a handheld wind meter. Uh, if I'm set up with my spotting uh, gear and equipment and I've got my shooter beside me and I'm looking at some of our other indicators to the scope, looking at the target. I've also got my wind meter up here, uh, automatically measuring the crosswind speed, and then obviously we can determine the direction because we're standing right here. So I'm measuring crosswind speed while I analyze my target, and I'm looking at the wind meter and kind of running an average on, on how fast that wind's blowing. Again, only the crosswind component is measured there. Now this is a very simple technique, but its limitation is it's only telling us what the wind is doing right here where we're standing. And in a lot of situations, the wind across the canyon or down in the valley is gonna be completely different than the wind that we're measuring right here. So we need some more techniques. Now the second technique is, I feel the most useful, the handiest, probably the most applied technique that we have in our arsenal uh, when we're out shooting long range and whether it's in the field or on targets or shooting schools, et cetera. And that's mirage, analyzing the mirage or the heat waves, which are caused by atmospheric distortion because of differences in the ground and air temperature. Now what we're looking for is wind speed and direction. So let's start with a no wind condition. We've got mirage downrange, we see it in the scope, uh, and it's boiling straight up. Uh, that tells us that we have no left to right component. And it also tells us that there's zero wind speed. So zero mile per hour wind speed. That indication can show whether it's dead calm or if we have a headwind or tailwind. So if we've got a 10 mile an hour tailwind, 
and we look through our scope, we're going to see that vertical mirage that tells us that mirage automatically uh, quantifies or calculates the crosswind velocity only. So it automatically tells us only the crosswind speed. So let's look at a couple different variables. Uh, let's look at a five mile per hour wind. If we're looking downrange through our scope and we see that mirage tip over to the right at a 45 degree angle, what that tells us is we have a left to right wind and a 45 degree angle also tells us that we're about a five mile per hour wind. So we take that value, uh, let's do it one more, let's look at 10 miles per hour. That would be a horizontal wind or 90 degrees. If we look down range, we see horizontal wind, uh, 90 degrees, that tells us left to right wind. It also tells us it's at least 10 miles per hour. Now, the at least is the kicker here because higher wind speeds still indicate with a horizontal mirage. So we have to be careful. It also makes the wind meter uh, more applicable in those higher wind speeds. Usually higher winds mean more consistent winds. So the wind meter becomes a more uh, effective tool uh, in analyzing the direction. Now, the way that we see Mirage is using high power optics, whether it's a spotting scope or a rifle scope. This is one argument for using a high magnification rifle scope, is it allows us to uh, zoom in and analyze and detect that Mirage. Now, we can zoom in on our target, or we can zoom in on a point, say, halfway to our target, analyze the Mirage at that point, and then use that in our summation of what the wind's doing. So th the last technique uh, is kind of a double check. We take our, our, our wind meter value and we take what we've seen in the spotting scope or our rifle scope uh, for our wind speed and direction downrange and then we double check with analyzing vegetation. And, and I'm talking about looking at grass, leaves, you know, watch the trees swaying, watch the push on the trees. Uh, even little things like looking at uh, an, an insect hatch or seeds that are floating across your line of sight or uh, spider webs up in the mountains. And you'll take these indications and confirm that direction and magnitude that we've estimated using our wind meter and using Mirage. Now these three techniques combined are going to make you a more efficient shooter and combined with the right cartridge combination and systematically applying that bracketing technique you'll be able to execute those long range shots making a proper wind compensation. I'm Aaron Davidson. For more shooting tips, go online to longrangepursuit.com.